spot it. Okay, that should do it. Welcome. Hang loose. How's it? Welcome to Mongoose Max Y. The channel. <laughs> this one's a guest box already. Three for standing by. Yeah, no, um, this is a part B of Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. What day is it? It's the the freaking thirtieth. Spiritual. Spiritual. I'm all at spiritual right now. Agree. Agreed. Agreed. Oh. Oh. Ah. I never stood by the new year comes in and all kinds of remarkable weird stuff goes on and Trump continues to get closed in on, especially with the taxes and oh gosh, that, that, that's just for now that the taxes are like, oh gosh, and then he's freaking out. Oh, there's all kinds of other stuff too, but uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, today there's the table topics thing. I pre-recorded it to be open honest with that because I didn't think I was going to have today to do it but that mountain of stuff to do was actually yesterday so I crammed yesterday so now I'm like nah, nah. so I just had to do this one so here's the paper for today yay yay it's the paper <laughs> here's the news see eh. okay there's stuff going on oh I don't want to block that stuff in the news but I bring this up because to bring this up what? <laughs> bring what up? Because there's a there's a special time of the year when things just get a little tingly and I, I don't know what to say, but I just get all a flutter <laughs> when things happen. So, I found that Dave Barry's two-part column is yesterday and today. So yesterday I delved into the, the itsy bits of the uh, beginning of it. So today we're going to, well, look at the second half. So first off, this is go right to how organized can you get, right? Go on to the news. Oh, oh, the new health clinic for Red Hill. Oh, but it's not so good. Oh, look, we're going to look back in the year. Elections, eruptions, corruptions. Oh, the top stories of today. I already got to relax. Oh, what's going on? Oh, I feel so. Oh, remember back in the day in 1980 when you just walked outside and there was like no police station because they didn't build it yet. <laughs> <sighs> uh, uh, I don't think there's anything going on. I think there's there's fire. They, they, they spent more fireworks this year than last year. So they're really... The people pull off on the side of the freeway to watch the fireworks. Yes? No. The police are going to really crack down on that. No more pulling off to the side of the road. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> So here we go, Dave Barry's Year in Review. Now, with Dave Barry's Year in Review, actually, you know what? Let's do this instead. This is this is only part two. Only that's it. There's like two parts, okay? <laughs> this is only part two. So we're gonna look at part one. That's part two. I'm gonna dig in to yesterday and do part two, but. I work at low light because my cameras are so awesome. <laughs> so I'm gonna, what is this thing? Okay. So here's part two. <laughs> Dave Barry. Year in review. Oh wait, this is part two. First of, oh, okay. Oopsie. It says two on both sides. So I read that part. January. Which begins at the world entering into the third, possibly eighth year, nobody really remembers anymore, of the pandemic. The American public is seriously divided. Everybody who is wearing a mask hates everybody who is not wearing a mask, and vice versa. Both sides are 100% supported by the science. Vaccines also continue to be subject of heated disagreement to the point where Neil Young demands that his music be removed from Spotify. This is a sentence we never envisioned while writing in connection with vaccines, but here we are. 
America faces three major crises, spiking COVID cases, soaring inflation, and alarming surge in the number of people who think it's okay to hold loud FaceTime conversations in public. The national mood is gloomy and is taking heavy political toll on President Joe Biden as voters increasingly question whether he is up to the up to the job of leading the nation or for that matter finishing his sentences according to the polls two big two biggest concerns of the public by far are the pandemic and the economy consequently congress is focused laser like on the senate filibuster rule this is a legislative fanatic that is evil when when the other side uses it but good when your side uses it at the moment the democrats want to change the rules so of course the republicans led by senator mitch I am smiling, damn it. McConnell are opposed to changing which which means Washington is consumed by bitter, vicious, nasty, name-calling battle pitting the Democrats against Senators Joe Manchin, Kristen Cinema, who are also Democrats. <laughs> In the end, as so often is the case with these burning issues that consume the nation's capital, nothing happens, which is the whole point of the constitutional system of checks and balances put into place by the founding fathers, all of whom, and this is a state testament to their wisdom and foresight, are dead. Meanwhile, the national debt, for the first time, creeps over thirty trillion dollars, which is more than the entire U.S. economy is worth. Mm. Fortunately, this is nothing to worry about. Forget we even brought it up. In other financial news, more and more people are buying cryptocurrencies, which appeal to investors because cryptocurrency market is not controlled by the government. Instead, it is controlled by a 13-year-old Justin Weeblemonger of Pennick, New Jersey, who runs the whole shebang out of his PlayStation 5. Justin also controls airline fares. In sports, Georgia faces Alabama and the AT&T, Ram Trucks, Allstate, Capital One, Disney, Bob Burgers, Dr. Pepper, Gatorade, Siri, uh, Taco Bell, Bowl to become champions of professional college football. Speaking of trucks, in February, there is trouble in all places of Canada, where news up there is that the capital city, Ottawa, is besieged by massive protests of convoy of trucks clogging the streets, honking horns, blocking traffic, making it impossible for anyone to get anywhere. Granted, this is the situation pretty much every day in, for example, New York City, but apparently in Canada, it is a big deal. As tension mounts, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, in controversial move, invokes emergency powers enabling the government to freeze the protesters' access to beaver pelts. Haha, -ha, we are poking some good-natured fun at Canada, which is actually a modern nation and an important trading partner as, depend, as we depend on it on to supply us with many vital things. Celine Dion is only one example. In all seriousness, the Canadian trucker strike is a significant event that raises some important issues which everyone immediately stops caring about because of the situation in Ukraine. Ukraine is an foreign nation that, though poor planning, is located right next to Russia. This is unfortunate because Russian President Vladimir Putin, a man who relaxes by putting kittens into a food processor, has long awaited to establish closer ties with Ukraine, in the same sense that a grizzly bear wants to establish closer ties with the salmon. On February 24th, the sam <laughs> salmon, the Russian army invest in <clears throat> the Russian army invades Ukraine. Everyone assumes that the Russians will easily prevail, but the Ukrainians put up a surprisingly strong resistance. We are using the word resistance in the sense of physically fighting back as opposed to tweeting defiant hashtags. Most of the world rallies around underdog Ukrainians and their charismatic president, Vlodo, Vol, Volodymyr, Volodymyr Zelensky, a foreign comedian, a, a former comedian and actor who basically is the opposite of Vladimir Putin. On the medical front, many states and municipalities drop their mask mandates as elected officials become aware of new scientific data showing that there's no strong statistical correlation between enforcing mask mandates and not getting re-elected. In sports winter Olympics held in the quaint and picturesque ski resort of Beijing, attract U.S. viewers' audiences estimate as to be Al Roker's immediate family. In a massively huge pro football development, Tom Brady announces his retirement, which means he can only finally move on after many decades of hearing about historical greatness of Tom Brady. <laughs> Speaking of stars, in March, 
Will Smith slaps Kiss Chris Rock during the Oscars and is arrested for assault. No, that's not what it would. That's what would happen to a non-celebrity such as yourself. Will Smith, on the other hand, sits back. <clears throat> so exciting. <laughs> sits back down and shortly thereafter receives an Oscar for standing ovation and a standing ovation. This incident results in a massive outpouring of media th think pieces from media thinkers pondering the significance of the slap. The story dominates the news for days, receiving far more coverage than the war in Ukraine, which is still going on. In economic news, inflation continues to strain the economy despite intensive efforts by the Biden administration to explain that it is caused by the Vladimir Putin, corrupt greed, COVID, supply chain issues, global climate change, the filibuster rule, the murder hornets, and various other factors totally unrelated to any policies of the Biden administration. For its part, the Republican National Committee issues a formal statement declaring that rampant inflation replaces a terrible financial burden on American working families, and we, to and we totally hope it stays bad until the midterm elections. No, wait, we didn't mean that to say that last part out loud. The Senate Judiciary Committee holds hearings on Biden's Supreme Court nominee, Kit Kitanji Brown Jackson. She is clearly qualified, so this is an excellent opportunity for Republican senators who believe the Democrats, Democrats have, have behaved like scum in hearings for equally qualified Republican nominees to show that they have more decency in class. But, of course, this is impossible under our current political system, under which the primary function of government is to gain revenge. So the Republican... Ah! That's all the time I got. I, you're kidding me. <laughs> the other legislative action senators passed a bill <clears throat> that would make daylight savings times permanent, meaning Americans no longer have to adjust to time change twice a year for no apparent reason. The bill is referred to as the House Languishing Committee thereby guarding it against danger that Congress might actually accomplish something useful. <laughs> In entertainment news, the venerable Rolling Stones announced that they will hold, they will hit the road this summer for their Drool on the Microphone tour. This will be the Stones' seventh tour since 2003. The good news is the ticket prices for the new tour will start as low as $150. The bad news is... The $150 seats are so far from the stage that the sound will not reach them until after the concert is over. Speaking of aging rock superstars, Tom Brady, nearly six week, full weeks after stunning the sports world by announcing his historic retirement, again stuns the sports world by announcing that he is coming out of retirement, thus triggering the long overdue wave of stories about the historic greatness of Tom Brady. In other sports news, this major, <coughs> major league baseball lockout ends as owners and players approve the collective bargaining agreement with some rules changes intended to make their product more attractive to modern fans, including starting games in the seventh inning, referring to runs as touchdowns, and some random point every game releasing large venomous snake in the infield. Speaking of fundamental institutions, the per in peril. In April, Elon Musk will stop there because we're running out of time. Yeah. <clears throat> Dad. Dad. Hate. Hate. Fault. Fault. Okay. Change up the channel here, and he wants to get some stuff going on, um, and uh, clearing out the room. And we had talked about um, studio action. <laughs> it's like. A too bad this is battery powered. We're like, well, anyways, uh, we're thinking about doing stuff. So, ah, but like today, I'll probably wake up and go, oh gosh, I'm in that. It's Groundhog Day for me because I'm in the pattern. I'm in the groove. I'm in the, ooh, I'm in the rut. I'm in the ingrained behavior. It's. I've been institutionalized. But we're going to try to figure how to make something that's a little bit more 
widespread audience style, but I don't know. <clears throat> It'll probably be weird. I don't know. But anyways, have a great day. I'm going to end there so it's not too long and all that. So have a great December 30th. It's countdown time, ain't it? Hey, have a look at the sunrise. It's like Aloha Friday. Aloha 2022. Aloha, aloha, aloha. It's the last week of aloha. December. Last one day. Aloha. One more day. Only one more day of 2022. Oh no. Last one day. Only one more day of 2022. Oh no. Oh, what happened? Fresh something. 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 Fresh